so uh yeah don't mind how i look oh uh, i think i'm gonna get my eyebrows on today anyway so don't mind how i look so i'm reading the book of exodus um i just got started um and in the portion that i'm reading moses and aaron had just went to pharaoh and uh moses and aaron had just went to pharaoh and you know explained to him that the lord said that he needs to let um the israelites go let let his people go because the israelites were considered god's people and so um he began to send plagues <laughs> plagues on only on the egyptian territory on their land but he did not allow any of the plagues to touch the israelites <laughs> And so I was reading the study uh, part of it, at the study portion at the bottom, like it gives you like a synopsis of the meanings of and the significance of these um, attacks and these plagues. Because um, in one part of it, it was saying that Pharaoh used the Nile as a source of life. Like he thought he controlled the Nile, but God in turn showed him that he's not in control of anything. He's not the creator. Um, of life and so he struck he allowed Aaron and Moses to strike the water and the water became blood all the fish died and reeked but Pharaoh seal excuse me Pharaoh still was not he wasn't even phased by it he was his heart was still hardened but this is the part that got me um it says in the second plague that they um there was a plague of frogs and frogs represented was uh, uh highly revered in the Egyptians because it represented fertility. They praised the frog um, because they thought that, you know, this will help their women become fertile or just fertility in general and, you know, and be fruitful. Um, but the Lord showed that he is the only one who is the giver of fruitfulness. And so it just says um, the second plague, frogs were um, venerated in Egypt because they were associated with fertility. But the Lord is a true giver of fruitfulness. Um, but the Lord, the true giver of fruitfulness, turned what had been revered into a cause of disgust. Um, and so the funny thing, where did it go? Man, I got to find it. Let's see. Okay. Again, Pharaoh's magicians made the plague worse by their imitation. So it's funny because each time that Moses and Aaron would send a plague or... Um, showed them a sign or wonder from the Lord, um, Pharaoh's magicians and sorcerers would come and, and, you know, show that they could do the same thing, that they could imitate what the Lord was doing. So the first time they threw down their staff, just as Aaron did, but Aaron's staff swallowed up their, sna swallowed up their snakes. And then with the frogs, they were able to produce more frogs. But in their imitation, they only made it worse on themselves. So what I got out of that was, I wrote down that the enemy's attempt to uh, the enemy's attempt to imitate God's hand only magnifies his downfall in the end, because the enemy tries to imitate, and he always hints the counterfeits, counterfeits in any area, not just in um, marriage, counterfeit blessings, counterfeit um, promises, like. The enemy tries to imitate what God does, but he only makes it worse on himself. He only makes, or sometimes, it's not like, I want to say like he's, he is only making God's promise even better. He's only even magnifying the promises that God has already um, promised you in doing so and trying to create his own master plan and come up with these own, his plans don't prevail only if you don't if you don't allow them to they can but if you don't allow them to because i was thinking about how um i was like well god why is it that these sorcerers were able to um do the same things that you you did why were they able to in certain ones because um after a while they couldn't imitate they couldn't um, imitate but the thing is all right i have to stop right here even in their imitation, they couldn't reverse the curse. They couldn't reverse it. So that proved that only God himself is the creator and the finisher. So he can start something, but he can also finish it. He can start something, he can also stop it. But the enemy cannot do that. 
He can only try to imitate what God does, but he has no power. In the end, it just shows that he has no power. And what I was getting from that is just how, <clears throat> how in, in trying to imitate um, God, when God created the heavens and the earth, um, there are rules, um, there are laws and principles in the spirit realm and in the earthly realm. And I'm learning about this more and more just as I um, dive deeper into um, my word. Um, there are spiritual laws. And what you allow, God has to allow. If you allow certain spirits in, even if they're not of God, God has to allow it. He has to back what you speak because that we are we are made like him we are made like him he was able to speak things into existence and this is why um people who believe in manifesting and um speaking those things into the universe god has to back it because he is not a he is not a man that he shall lie nor is he the son of man that he shall repent he he made us like him so the dominion that he has in the spiritual realm he gave it to all people. We were to to uh, to be fruitful and multiply. We were to have dominion in this realm. This is why that the magicians were able to perform the same wonders and signs as God, but they can't do it to the extent or the power of God, if that makes sense. Like we, he made it so that we have whatsoever we speak. We have um, as a man think in his heart, so is he. That principle applies to everyone, everybody, even those who are non-believers, even those who believe in the power of manifest power of manifestation, law of attraction. All of those things hold true because God has to. He has to back what you allow. He allows what you allow. That's that's the thing about God. So if you allow the enemy in, he can't stop you because of the free will that he, he gave to us. So it is our choice to choose him. It is our choice to um, not follow him. But ultimately, when we go to him for judgment, he will ask us, what do we do with, with this life? What do we do with what he's given us? How did we choose in our free will? I mean, and if you didn't choose him, then he won't choose you because he he loves us. He allows us to love him freely. He does not have chains on us. That is the difference between the enemy and, and, and God. He does not, when we, when we allow God in, he doesn't like, okay, chains, you, now you are, um, kind of like a slave to what what it is that I that I say but when you make agreements with the enemy you are chained to those enemies they become strongholds and when you try to break free of them that's when the struggles really begin to happen you begin to see that dang this wasn't really my choice like now this is no longer my choice now I am now I'm addicted to this thing now I am so t attached to this thing that I'm unable to break free but only through the power of the Holy Spirit and the power of the blood of Jesus are you able to break free from those agreements that you have made with the enemy. This, this is why it's it's, it's ultimately the, the best choice to choose God because in choosing God, there are no chains um, linked to his promises. This is not like a carrot being dangled over your head. Like, here it is. Here's a trick. Here's a trap because the enemy may imitate God, but his, his imitation are only traps. They only lead to death. <clears throat> They don't lead to life. He is he is the author of confusion. He wants to confuse you. He wants to think he wants you to believe that his promises um look like God's, but in the end, it, it only leads to your demise. It only leads to your demise. So it's so crazy how even in trying to imitate God, he still can't give you the best. He can only imitate, but he can't he can't be. He can't be. Um he can't be he can't be God. Ultimately he can't be God. From the time that he fell from fell, fell from heaven and he was put out of at heaven and with, along with the other angels. He he has been trying to imitate God. He has been trying to take the throne seat. He has been trying to take the reins in, in people's lives and he is still seeking whom he may devour in the earth. 
while his time while he has time because his time is is limited he is on a time he is on a time clock time is running out <laughs> time is running out and he knows that he knows that so he's only trying to do even more he knows the enemy can't read your mind he he is not omnipresent he cannot be everywhere at the same time he is not god but he just he is like a spy in a sense where he is using um may, maybe people in your life he's using things to watch your actions and what you speak out of your mouth he can't even see what god is doing in a sense he can only feel when something is about to happen like okay i think god is about to move mightily in this person's life because how they're speaking how they're praising he's watching to see what he can do to disrupt those breakthroughs he's watching to see how he can throw in his before god's come let me throw in this counterfeit really quick let me throw in this counterfeit blessing to show them or to cut them off from the real thing that is ultimately his goal is to cut you off from the real thing from what god truly has for you because if he can do that he can stop you from getting the blessing if he could do that he could stop you from getting into the actual marriage he can stop you from actually getting the job that god has for you he can stop you from actually walking into the fullness and the purpose that god has for you with these roadblocks and these counterfeits that he sends the counterfeit and the blessing happens in the same season in the same season i was just um listening to darius daniels yesterday and he was reading from the book of nehemiah when nehemiah was in the palace right <laughs> nehemiah was in the palace but he got worried that jerusalem their wall was destroyed it was building they were trying to build but at, they were still exposed to the enemy they were still exposed to the enemy so they were unable to build without it being ruined all over again unable to keep building and having to um for it to be ruined all over again so when he came, when he was able to, he had the resource because he was in the palace and he asked the king and he was shocked that the king granted or he, you know, he asked and he was received. I'm not even going to get on that. He asked and he was able to receive resources from the king. He went to, um, to build, to build in Jerusalem. And as he's building, the enemy is like, Hey, come down here. I have to tell you something. Hey, I have to tell you something. Over and over again, three three or four times, um, the enemy um, tried to distract him while he was building. And so, and so, and so he... Um, he never, he never came down. But the thing is, while they were building, they had, he had some set up. To, just to be on the defense we had a line of defense where people just had um swords and battle gear and then those who were building had a sword on their hip and a hammer in the other hand they had to build and fight at the same time or build and be prepared at the same time like he the way he explained it he was like you're built for both you have to build and you have to go to battle sometimes it's at the same time and that's what i meant by in the counterfeit season you still have to be battling as you're growing in god because the enemy is not just going to let you go into the promise he's just not going to just let you go free like okay the promise is here this is why he sends counterfeit because you have to build and you have to battle at the same time you have to continue to fight the enemy just because god promises you something does not mean the enemy is going to let you go scot-free so these people had a, a knife or a sword in one hand and a hammer in the other or whatever they needed whatever tool they needed to build the wall so the enemies couldn't attack them you know attack them their city while they were trying to rebuild it they're trying to rebuild the city but they were exposed and when we become exposed the enemy's attacks the attacks easily come in so when we're not guarded when we don't have when we don't equip ourselves for battle while we build we have to do this simultaneously we can't get caught so much in and the enemy wants only for you to be stuck and caught in battle battle mode but not building He's like, here is this, that is ultimately some of, somewhat of the, the, the distraction too, is that you're building or you're, um, you get so caught like, dang, okay, maybe this is the state that I should remain in. I just should stay in battle mode and you forget to continue to build. You still have to continue to strive for God's promises. Even if you got to swing with one hand and hammer with the other, that's exactly what Darius was saying. And you have to swing, swing and swing at the same time you're swinging at swinging 
swinging your hammer and you're swinging your sword to protect yourself while you're building because you have to the enemy does not care that that you got a promise the enemy does not care that you are um um that you are uh made in the image of god he doesn't care about any of that he wants to he wants to bring you down regardless of how you are how close you are to the promise the closer you are <clears throat> they literally say the closer you are the more the warfare begins to get to heighten because the enemy knows you're almost there he's like this person is too close i need you to throw this i need you to do this i need you to do this or he's doing this he's doing this but the more that's that's when you have to press even harder you have to press even harder because the enemy knows that you're that close he knows that you're that close so he be, tries to imitate the hand of god because sometimes the battle doesn't look like the battle doesn't look like what you think it does. It doesn't always look like hardship. Sometimes it looks like a good time. Sometimes it looks like somebody, um, some something familiar to you. Because he he's crafty. That's the thing about him. He's crafty. So he knows that he can't send <clears throat> full blown missiles and bombs and blowing up stuff in your life. Because then you'd be like, wait a minute. Now you know that's him. He has to do it in a way that it looks like God, but but if you're paying close enough attention, you know it's not. He does things that, that looks pretty and beautiful on the outside, but on the in, inside is just full of deceit and lies and all of these different things. He has to make it look familiar. That is how he keeps... Oh, I was just listening to uh, John Reynolds. That's how he keeps you in cycles. Because he used what's familiar to keep you in the same cycle. What is the lyric? Um, it was just saying, you, uh, the enemy learn from your mistakes, even if you won't. Even if you won't, the enemy learns from your mistakes and he uses your mistakes to keep you in the same, look, same rotation, same rotation. Because I found myself falling back into the same... <clears throat> emotional path because with me i allowed my emotions to rule for years for years my emotions rule me so if i was feeling down or upset or whatever i would just lay in the bed i wouldn't do anything because i'm just like what is the point and i almost did that again this morning i had got upset about something something was said to me something and i was just like well i'm just gonna go back home lay down i'm tired anyway i'm just gonna give into this emotion and sometimes you can't do that and the enemy knows that 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 was my struggle that me battling with my emotions and me being stuck all in here all in here literally couldn't couldn't speak a word wouldn't speak a word wouldn't even declare god's word wouldn't even declare over my life wouldn't even declare over my day i wouldn't say anything i would sit i would scroll and i would be quiet i could listen to god's word he doesn't that, the thing is he doesn't care if you listen to god's word he doesn't care if you if you take it in every day but if you don't apply it that's the thing that's why it says the enemy comes in to snatch the word because he doesn't mind if you read it but if you don't understand it good he's like good she didn't even understand what she just read it, it's like he tries to snatch the word snatch the seed that god just planted when you read your word or just planted when you were sitting in church and receiving all the downloads that god had for you if you don't apply it then he's like good keep on reading i don't care you can read all day long that's the thing the enemy doesn't mind he doesn't care if you read your word it's when you begin to take on ownership and begin to take to begin to know your power know how powerful you are that is exactly when he begins to be like wait a minute now i gotta i gotta cause a disturbance because this this woman is getting too powerful she's beginning to know who she is this is too much to handle we cannot let her know how powerful she is because when she knows that i'm done I'm done. The enemy doesn't want you to know that you have power on the inside of you. He does, Like I said, he does not care how much you read in your word. He said, read it all day long, sugar. You can read it as much as you want. But if you don't take it in and allow it to change, begin to do an inward work, being transformed by the renewing of your mind. If you, if he doesn't, he doesn't want you to renew your mind. Because if you do that, 
if you do that, he knows he's in trouble. When you begin to renew your mind, he knows he's in trouble. So begin to allow the word to transform you from the inside. It does not matter what the outward image looks like. It, it, it matters what happens on the inside. When you allow God to work, God's word to begin to take root and produce fruit in your life and the enemy starts to see this fruit, dang, I, she's producing apples, oranges, bananas, strawberries, all on one tree because you become, you begin to become so fruitful that the enemy is like okay this is not this ain't it so he begins to plant different seeds and weeds to try to choke out and try to to suck the life out of the fruit that's being produced in your life but the thing is he can't he can't do that if you don't allow him to the, the things he does is he plants thoughts in your mind so you can begin to speak out in your mouth so they can begin to produce food because again the 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 earthly realm has principles. We have whatsoever we speak. If the enemy can plant a thought and allow it to come out of our mouths, he understands the principles. He understands the principles. So like I said, he tries to imitate God by having planting thoughts in our minds so we can speak it out so it can come to pass. But we have to be mindful of what we allow in our mind. That's why God said, be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. Because when you do that, you don't allow the enemy. You He may plant a thought, but you won't speak it out so it become fruit. He may plant plant words for you to begin to confess over your life but when you renew your mind you begin to speak God's word and not produce the, the fruit that the enemy desires for you to produce because he understands the laws and the principles of the spirit realm and the earthly realm just as well as we should he knows it he knows the word of God he knows the power that's within the word but he tries to snatch it so that we don't understand it he tries to snatch it so that we won't understand that when we speak God moves when we speak God backs it he knows that so just as bad as if we speak a bad thing, he knows God has no choice but to honor it, but to back it because he is a man of his word. He said we we have that we speak, we can speak and things become to have. Things begin to happen. I shall have, I shall receive. Speak into the atmosphere. The enemy knows the power of the word. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. That is such a powerful thing because you can speak life and have life. You can speak death and have death. Not, a, not even a physical death. Things can begin to die in your life. Finances, um, children's behavior, relationship, things will begin to die because of what you speak. My God in heaven. My God in heaven. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your minds that you're speaking. <laughs> oh my God. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What you allow in your heart will begin to flow out of your mouth will begin to flow out of your mouth. Jesus said that in the word. I was just reading that yesterday. I was just reading that yesterday because something was said to me yesterday that had me so thrown off. And in my in my spirit, I just heard out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And Jesus said that himself as he was speaking to the people who were coming against him when he was performing miracles and healing people on the Sabbath. Oh, whoo. Jesus, this, this is too good to me. This is too good to me. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So what you allow in your heart, the issues of life and the things that we allow in will begin to flow out. And the enemy knows that. So that's why he tries to throw all this stuff inward. Look at this. Look at what you're doing. Look at your life. Look at this. Look at that. Look at that. He'll have you looking and focusing all on the wrong things. So you begin to speak those things and it just keeps happening. Cycles. Cycles, excuse me. Cycles. Cycles. Just, it will keep you literally in cycles. My God, I had no idea that this would go how it went. But thank you, Holy Spirit, for speaking to me and through me. Because, Lord, that is so good. When you begin to understand the principles, the enemy doesn't want you to understand the principles. He doesn't want you to understand the laws and how God created this, the earthly realm and the heavenly realm. Because they are, they, <laughs> the, he, the, the earthly realm mirrors the heavenly realm as it is in heaven so shall it be on the earth so shall it be on the earth Woo, jesus all right i'm gonna get off of here i'm looking crazy i didn't even expect to do all of that the lighting is terrible whatever but y'all y'all be good <laughs>